As we light the first candle of the Advent season, we honor this time of hope and great expectation. We invite the power of our imaginations to bless all the, all the coming events of the season. We open to the grace of God, which flows through us to touch and heal all living beings on earth. We invite warm blessings into our homes and special blessings for all children, for our dreams, our joys, our hopes. How appropriate. I'm with you today. <laughs> but you remember, Chance did Diwali. He's yes. Christian. He did Hindu festival. So why should I do this? This is a beautiful reading. I have already, uh, Adnan was nice enough to email it to me. So I read it and it really touched my soul. The earth is full of your goodness your greatness and understanding, your wisdom and harmony. How wonderful are the lights that you created. You formed them with strength and power, and they shine very wonderfully on the world, magnificent in their splendor. They arise in radiance and go down in joy. Reverently, they fulfill your divine will. They are tributes to your name as they exalt your sovereign rule in the song. How does the love of others change us? It's by Stephen Post. Love is grounded in meaning and inclines us to action. When we love others, we feel that their happiness, security, and well-being matter to us greatly and we act accordingly. Love has its different spheres of activity. There is the sphere of the nearest and dearest. Imagine, for example, young parents looking over their toddler or a quiet moment between close friends. There is the sphere of humanity as a whole, the equal regarding affection for all that is associated with a Lincoln or a Gandhi or Reverend Martin Luther King. There is the love of non-human creatures. Whatever the sphere in love, the other is not an object to be manipulated, but a subject, thou, a unique and cherished center of value. Love for the nearest and the dearest should not make us forget the neediest, our shared humanity, or other species. There are several forms that love takes. Celebration is love affirming the lives and achievements of others. Helping is love lifting burdens for others. Forgiveness is love in response to contrition. Care confrontation, confrontation being such a limited word, is love standing against destructive behaviors. Humor is love uplifting and reframing in jovial lightness. Respect is love looking twice at the views of others. Attentive listening is love focused on the other's narrative without distraction or interruption. <clears throat> Compassion is love aware of suffering and responding to it with death. Loyalty is love sticking with others in their hard times. Creativity is love making gifts for others. Love manifests itself in different ways, all of which are necessary and useful. If love is the hub of a wheel, its spokes point outward according to the needs of the beloved. I appreciate it. So I'm guessing that most of you heard about this five-year-old boy. <clears throat> and if you haven't, I'm going, but even if you have, I'm going to tell you the story anyway because it's a beautiful one. One of hope, one of love. This little boy, Miles, is five years old. And a week ago Friday, Make, he, has, he was diagnosed when he was a year and a half, in 18 months, with leukemia. And a week ago Friday, the Make-A-Wish Foundation granted his wish. And his wish was to be Batman. That's his favorite superhero. And this was up in, the San Francisco, in San Francisco. They gave him his Batman costume. He took on oh so very many foes in San Francisco. One of them was a damsel in distress on the cable car tracks. Another one was he captured the Riddler as he was robbing the bank. He saved the San Francisco giant mascot 
from the penguin spoils. <laughs> they took this little five-year-old boy and they sped him around the city in a black Lamborghini with a Batman symbol on the side of it. There were police officers blocking traffic and alongside him, alongside this Lamborghini, they had a motorcade going. Now, <coughs> every stop this little boy made, the crowd grew larger and larger. And do you know there, not, there weren't just hundreds of people. There were thousands, thousands of people who helped this little boy make his dream come true. How beautiful is that? By the time he got to Union Square for lunch, there were thousands of people lined up. The organizers of this event and the police were having a, a difficult time keeping the path for the motorcade and the car to go through. I mean, how cool is that? <clears throat> People were lined up in the streets six deep for blocks, for many blocks. My favorite part is the San Francisco Chronicle, the newspaper, printed hundreds of newspapers. And what did the headline read? That kid saved city. <laughs> wow. Talk about love making a difference. How powerful, not just for that child, for his family, and not just for the child and his family, for those who were supporting him, for those who were loving him through this process, for those who gave him that gift of love. There were people from all over the country there. And I understand that President Obama actually sent a recorded message and tweeted in the whole nine yards, right? and thank this kid for saving San Francisco. I mean, how cool is that? <clears throat> Bring to mind a time that you were supported by love. Maybe it didn't change the situation, although my guess is you felt much better about what was going on. There is nothing more important to us as human beings than being supported by love. The first thing that came to mind for me personally was, you know, several years ago when I decided to do the work that I'm doing without the support and the love of my family, my husband, first and foremost, I wouldn't be doing what I was doing, what I'm doing. You know, we, I'm sure all of us would have met and come together at some point in time, probably wouldn't have been here. It, did it make it easier in the day-to-day -day stuff? Not really. Not physically, but emotionally. The support of my children, of, of my husband, of my entire family made it possible for me to hang in there, to get through those difficult times. And that's what we're called to do for each other, aren't we? As friends, as family, as loved ones. <clears throat> Helen Keller, we all know, was deaf and blind. <clears throat> and yet, she had this ironically insightful statement. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Wow. Now we all inherently know that's the absolute truth, don't we? And we all know the difference that love makes in our life, in our daily life. <clears throat> So how does the love of others change us? How are we changed when we exchange that active love with others? Well, one way, and probably I would say one of the most important ways, is that we become so engaged in sending out and giving love that we free ourselves from any preconceived ideas we have about all the garbage in our life, right? We let go of that, we step out of ourselves. We can't be in two spaces at one time. We can't be giving and sending and sharing love and whining and complaining about where we're stuck. 
If we feel that lack of love, what's the best thing to do? Give love. If we're feeling unhappy, if we feel stifled in our life, what's the best thing to do? Give. Put it back out there. Because as we give, we receive. And if we stop that process, we are going to feel stuck. We are going to feel unwanted and unloved and uncared about. They, you know, them, they say that if you're unhappy, smile. And, you'll, and that's going to help create that happiness. Fake it till you make it is what they say. Have you ever tried that? You know what? It works. It works if you throw yourself into it. Sir John Templeton once wrote that it's impossible to be bored if you love your neighbor. There's always something to do when you're loving and when you're giving and when you're supporting. When we seek happiness and security and, and well-being of another, the world then becomes, we become fully engaged. We become full within ourselves. And in turn, we're developing those gifts that we have, those innate God-given spiritual gifts that we've been given, that we've been given to share, not to hold on to. And sometimes we forget that. It's what I love about December. In December, it's as if everyone remembers, oh yeah, I have so much to give and now's the time. No, it's always time. <clears throat> as we share ourselves, uh, we're creating deeper, more intimate connections with people. We no longer have a, a, a use for those surface relationships. We don't have any surface relationships because we're touching each other soul to soul, heart to heart. We feel loved, we feel cared about when we do that, when we're giving and receiving. And what does that do? That encourages us to be more, to do more, to give more. Because the more we're giving and putting out, the more we're receiving in return. Loving others is a source of great, incredible joy. And in truth, we don't even have to worry about the idea of reciprocity because the benefits are always there within us, inwardly. We're simply paying it forward. And we always know, without question, without having to think about it, that all of that we're giving out will come back to us tenfold. It can't help it. It's the way the universe works. Loving others, providing we take care of ourselves, is, has been linked in several different surveys to better health, physical and psychological. And you've probably read some of, some of those um, surveys. Excuse me. In 2010, there was a survey released by United Healthcare in the volunteer match. 4,500 American adults were uh, surveyed. 41% of them volunteered an average of 100 hours a year. And of those people, they all said, 68% of them rather said, that volunteering made them physically feel better, that they had a change in their physical being. 89% said it improved their sense of well-being. 89%, it's a big number. 73 said it lowered their stress stress levels. 92 said it increased their sense of purpose in life. And 96 said, 96% said that volunteering made them feel happier. It's about giving love. It's about sharing with others who you are. It's about being that beneficial presence in life. I don't know if you saw the movie Don Juan DeMarco, but Johnny Depp said this as Don Juan DeMarco. There are only four great questions in life. What is sacred? Of what is the spirit made? What is worth 
living for and what is worth dying for? To all of them, the answer is the same, only love. Isn't that great? Love is our primary human emotion. And since the beginning of time, in the name of love, we have climbed mountains, we have crossed seas, we have navigated across deserts and endured hardships. The Christian apostle Paul distinguished the concept of love when he indicated that all human accomplishments not motivated by love are, in the end, empty. Do you feel that? If our actions aren't motivated by love, they do feel empty. Love is something that we all need, something that we all crave. And it brings us joy. It brings us well-being. It's free. Let's give it away. Let's share it. It's as natural as the air that we breathe. And actually, we need it for our very own existence. We each and all have the seeds of love within us, and we can develop this unconditional love by nurturing it, by sharing it, by giving it away, because the more we give away, the more we get right back. You can't outgive love, God, source. Some years ago, a group of professional people posed this question, what does love mean? They posed it to a group of four to eight year old kids. And they were amazed and astonished at the answers that they received. A little girl by the age of eight said, when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis. That's love. Now, an eight-year-old, is that beautiful? There's a little, uh, little four-year-old boy. He said, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is different, you just know your name is safe in their mouth. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Little girl at age of four. I know my older sister loves me, because she gives me all her old clothes and has to go out and buy new ones. <laughs> what a sister, huh? <laughs> I'm sure by now she's changed her tune on that one. <laughs> and a little boy, um, age seven. <clears throat> Love is what's in the room with you at Christmas. If you stop opening presents and listen. Oh. And a little girl by the age of six, if you want, no, this is one we all need to take home. If you want to learn to love better, you should start with a friend you hate. Oh. Wow. Right? Sharing that love, sharing your heart, giving everything you have. It's in the sharing and the giving of love that we make a difference. Give love and you experience love. Express love to the world around you, and guess what? The world reflects that right back to you. Our world is filled with endless opportunities to experience love, respect, hope, peace, joy. Each of us desires to understand and to realize these experiences of love. We seek it in our families, in our friends, in our spiritual community, our career, our hobby. We even look for it in nature. And here's the truth. It is right within you. That's where it is. It is within you, ready to be given, ready to be experienced. And it's when we, as individuals, realize our potential to love unconditionally that we transform ourselves and transform this planet at the very same time. It's up to us. That is the amount of power that we have in this life, in our world, every single day. I'm going to close with a quote by Philip Brown. When the human race embraces love unconditional, then the lost will be found, the naked will be clothed, the hungry will be fed, the bombs will be destroyed, 
and there will be peace and unity, which will make us all speak one language, love. Love does indeed manifest itself in many ways, all of them necessary and useful. And so this week, I invite you to throw your heart out into that world in as many ways as you possibly can. Watch and be amazed what happens. So thank you so much for being here. Well, I shared this truth as I understand it.